Hello and welcome. My name is Mary Diwaisaki, and I'm the Director of Engagements on the Global Education Team here at Cisco. I'm delighted to welcome you to this broadcast. I hope you'll also join us for our June presentation, which is listed on this slide. You can register on our community website for education leaders, getideas.org. Our previous broadcasts on the 21st Century Skills, Education 3.0, Partnerships, and the Impact of Globalization are also available for viewing on Get Ideas. Today, I'll be speaking to you about how eight school districts in the U.S. Gulf Coast embarked on a journey of transformation after Hurricane Katrina. Despite the devastation and the rebuilding challenge, these districts also decided to take on the rethinking challenge. They used the devastation of the hurricane as an opportunity to look at new ways of teaching and learning for the 21st century. After Hurricane Katrina, school districts in the Gulf Coast faced enormous challenges, but some also saw opportunities in crisis. Some recognized that they were at a pivotal point, that the storm had given them a unique chance to develop a new vision. Partners stepped forward to help, including Cisco, and the eight districts became part of the Cisco 21st Century Schools Initiative, or 21S. According to Cisco CEO John Chambers, the, the vision for 21S was to empower students to thrive in the 21st century economy using the Gulf Coast schools as the catalyst. 20 Cisco fellows relocated to the Gulf Coast to help the schools rethink education for the 21st century. The focus was on scalability and sustainability. Since many school reform efforts had failed in the past due to a lack of attention to these areas, most importantly, the vision was built around student-centered learning, enabled and driven by technology. So the overall goal of 21S was to develop a new sustainable model for holistic education reform to prepare students for the 21st century global economy. And this model was based on a new framework for change. In the next group of slides, I'll outline the major pillars or principles that made up the framework for change. Now, no one factor can bring about the change that is needed in our schools. Change can only take place through this kind of complex interplay of many factors. The first principle and the first thing we did was work with school leaders to develop the new vision. The goal was to have the leaders model and communicate the vision throughout the district because sustainable change must come from the top and permeate down to all levels. Also, research shows that 21st century teaching and learning must include 21st century skills, collaboration, creativity, problem solving, innovation, media literacy, and more to prepare students for jobs in our global economy. An emphasis on 21st century skills and pedagogy was the second principle in the framework for change. School leaders are well aware that many students are not engaged in learning because the way they learn in their digital world today. It's dramatically different from the way they are taught in schools. But leaders know that they can engage students. They will learn, and 21S addressed this with technologies and strategies that engaged kids. So a new way of thinking about learning with students at the center was key to the 21st Century Initiative. Very importantly, 21S provided job-embedded professional development at every level. The goal was to help build leadership skills as well as in-classroom teaching skills. This was a key element of the framework for change. Another important part of the vision was to align the efforts with the needs of the local economy because schools have too often been divorced from their communities in the past. And because school districts can't do it alone, 21S brought in partners in areas such as training and integrating technology into the curriculum to support learning. As you see at the bottom of this slide, every component of the framework for change was enabled by technology. Technology became the backbone for daily teaching and learning, as well as for the districts and school infrastructure. Finally, the entire 21S effort was evaluated on a regular basis by the Education Development Corporation, EDC, a highly regarded independent evaluator, and their feedback was incorporated into the program. Now, I'd like to show you a short video clip with some comments from one of the superintendents in Mississippi.
Students are responding in a class, and the children are saying, I want to be in Miss Jones' class because they're having fun in there. They don't realize they're, they're learning and having fun at the same time. So by all means, and then when teachers realize they're losing students and nobody wants to be in their class, they want to know what Miss Jones is doing too so they can make it more inviting uh, for their students. Uh, um, many of our children live, in, live literally in a box, and they don't get outside of their little community and their walking distance. Many of them don't even have transportation, car transportation, so they, they see very little. Uh, by having them, exposed, having them exposed using the technology, they can see anything and be exposed to anything. For example, uh, they can go to Europe or they can go to uh, another state or they can go to the beach or they can go to Disney World, which many of them may not go. They can go to a concert that they may never would see before. Uh, and I always say that children can only do what they know and what they're exposed to. And one of the keys to their being successful is that they get an opportunity to see and, and see different things so they will know what to look for, what to work for, what to focus on, how to set goals. You can't set a goal for something you haven't seen. So by exposing them uh, through the technology, the sky is the limit. And I say that, and I know I've gone around the world, but a good thing, a, a comparative analysis I often use, that 20 years ago, in order to escape a sad life, a hard life, uh, many of the difficulties our children are going through. They may could have checked the book out of the library, and it could have taken them to another world. Now, in addition to having that book, and I love books, and certainly not discounting that, but books are limited. Instead of just taking the book, they can actually go into the musical world. They can actually put their bodies in the place virtually. They can be there walking it, hearing it, seeing it. So that's the beauty of the technology. The new Sustainable Framework for Change was based on four transformational processes. Visionary leadership, 21st century classroom practice, high quality infrastructure, and policies, procedures, and partners. First, we need to focus on the important role of visionary leadership. Leaders drive change forward, and they need to be the champions of the vision to move the culture to one of collaboration and innovation. Ongoing job embedded training for leaders and their staff was another important component of 21S. All these changes meant that leaders were able to re-inspire teachers with a new love for teaching. Leaders also focused on connecting their schools and districts to the local economy and community. Dr. Diane Roussel, the superintendent of Jefferson Parish Public Schools in Louisiana, had dreamt of change in their district since long before Hurricane Katrina hit. But it wasn't until the district became part of 21S that she was able to flesh out her dream into a fully-fledged vision and program for education transformation. Dr. Roussel's dream was to prepare students for the rapidly changing demands of our global economy and to fulfill what she calls the moral imperative of education to help all students reach their potential. So she grasped the opportunity for change presented by the tragedy of the hurricane and set about a program of system-wide change in her district. And she consistently led the team by emphasizing the role of technology, professional development, and student-centered learning in bringing change to the district. She has continued this effort with an institute to be held in August in Jefferson Parish to showcase the district's achievement to other educators. Here we see some of the ways that Dr. Roussel and other leaders in Jefferson Parish have driven change forward in their district. Although 21S started in only 16 schools in this district, change had to take place at a fairly rapid rate. For one thing, technology can quickly be outdated if the process takes too long. And the district has met its goal for all 87 schools to be on board this year. As you know, model schools or schools of the future are common in education reform efforts. But that's not what 21S is about, and it's not what Jefferson Parish is about. This district is serious about sustainability and replication. Their goal is to have every school and district reap the benefits of the 21S experience. New organizational structures with an expanded technology team and design teams in each school support the system-wide vision. As I mentioned earlier, job-embedded professional development is one of the principles of the 21S Framework for Change. This slide lists some of the 21S professional development partners. As you know, most teachers in the U.S. attend professional development workshops on a regular basis. But what's different about 21S, again, is the emphasis on sustainability. Most professional development 
is not part of a holistic vision. It's often an isolated event that has little ongoing relevance. So typically, a lot of money is spent with few results. But ongoing job embedded training delivered at the right time and in the right sequence was a major factor in changing the culture and learning outcomes in the 21S districts. The next major transformational process of 21S was a, a new approach to classroom practice. We work with leaders and teachers to incorporate 21st century skills into the curriculum. Since research shows that students learn better in groups or teams, we work with leaders to emphasize collaborative learning. Research also shows that kids learn better when they're working on real-world projects or project-based learning. However, the emphasis on academic skills, particularly STEM skills, remains strong. These skills are clearly essential in the global economy and an area where the U.S. students generally lag behind. We also focused on the professional learning styles and ability of each student with instruction that allowed each student to, to go at his or her own pace. Student-centered learning and engaging work for students were central to the vision. And finally, 21S focused on helping students develop a broader understanding of the world we live in and the different cultures around the world. To give you an example of the impact of the 21S on students, I'd like to briefly tell you a story about one of our junior high students. The history teacher reported that she was finally able to engage a student had long been bored and unmotivated in class. When she found him listening to a Japanese American rap singer, she allowed him to use his interest in rap music and video to develop an assignment on the Japanese American experience in World War II. This boy finished up creating a wonderful video that's been posted to YouTube and even to the rap singer's website. He has since gone on to college and good future prospects, including his own company. Clearly, this type of learning is much more engaging for most students than filling in the blanks on questions Xeroxed out of the textbook. It can truly affect their academic performance. Here, the teacher is using a real-world event, an earthquake, along with engaging technology such as podcasting integrated into the teaching and learning to support the curriculum. As you know, technology in education has often been an adjunct to learning. But in the 21S vision, technology is fully integrated into daily teaching and learning. You know, by the way, we've also seen a new level of enthusiasm on the part of the teachers. 21S has re-inspired teachers, helped them rediscover their learn love for learning, and helped veteran teachers overcome their fear and start using technology. In terms of the impact on students, preliminary test score data in Jefferson Parish show positive leading indicators with improvement in student performance on the LEAP scores. LEAP refers to the Louisiana Education Assessment Program, the standardized test in the state of Louisiana. District leaders at Jefferson Parish attribute this growth, growth to the interplay of many factors that influence learning, including student engagement, teacher enthusiasm, and supporting technologies. The 21S districts have reported across the board improvement on student engagement, which, which we know is a precondition for improvements in learning. 21S emphasized the importance of high quality technology and infrastructure to drive and support change. The integration of, in, of technology and instruction was key in order to facilitate student-centered learning, support teachers in the 21st century learning, and ensure equity and digital inclusion for all students. Here, Dr. Betsy Americo, the leader of the integration specialists at Jefferson Parish, she stresses the importance of, of integrating technology and instruction. She talks about not using technology for its own sake, but to, to support students motivated and real world learning. As she points out, when students buy into school assignments, educators know they are learning. The network infrastructure was upgraded in every 21S district, and teachers and administrators received laptops. In the classroom, we introduced many new technologies that engaged kids and promoted learning in numerous ways. Every classroom was equipped with what we call the, the baseline configuration to allow students to access the boundless resources of the Internet. Other classrooms received the enhanced configuration, Elementary teachers received a PDA with wireless generation software, which allowed them to walk around the classroom, 
quickly test each student's reading level and provide activities targeted to where that student is at that very moment. So they didn't have to wait weeks to get test results back and figure out who needed help. Help could be provided instantly and students were able to progress more quickly. Schools also received what we call digital media kits, which included digital cameras, iPods, flip video cameras, web cameras, and more. Supported by professional development programs, teachers learned how to incorporate engaging Web 2.0 activities into the curriculum, like podcasting, Skypes, blogging, wikis, and so on. Classroom technologies play an essential role in bringing teaching and learning into the digital world our students inhabit today. They also have many other instructional benefits. They make it much easier for teachers to provide individualized instructions to meet the needs of different learners. You know, they, they speed up assessment in the remediation loop. They let kids work together across the miles with peers in other countries. And they motivate students with cool new assignment for it, formats like movies or podcasts. Finally, 21S focused on partners, well-managed school systems, accountability, and student outcomes. For one example, one of our partners was the Smithsonian American Art Museum, or SAM. Cross-disciplinary teams of teachers attended a week-long professional development session at SAM to learn about integrating art into the curriculum using technology. The teachers overcame their fear of technology, ignited their passion for teaching, and became evangelists for a new way of educating students. They also returned excited about their ability to pass on the training to others, as well as to continue their own learning and build community with educators in other districts. 21S was supported throughout by a very robust partner ecosystem across all the areas you see listed here. Professional development partners such as SAM provided leadership training and teacher training at all levels. Another example of our partnership with Digital Opportunity Trust, uh, DOT, who provided classroom technology interns, college students or recent graduates who helped teachers integrate technology into the curriculum. Our partnership with One Economy Corporation provided low-cost computers for families at home. This slide shows the goal of the 21S districts, all components of a well-managed 21st century school system, simplified processes, improved communication, 21st century skills, engaged students, and collaborative, media-rich environments, enabled and driven by the network and by technology. This high school physics teacher moved from lecture-based teaching to 21st century pedagogy that emphasizes more student-centric methods. He recognized that on their own, new technologies are nothing more than expensive toys, but when combined with 21st century pedagogy and curricula, they can help students learn subjects and concepts that are difficult to teach using traditional methods. He was a leader in his school's effort to create a more challenging and collaborative learning environment through the strategic use of technology. He found there was a lot less frustration in his classroom and a lot more interest because the technology allowed students to focus on problem solving and analysis. The end result was a significant improvement in higher order thinking skills and a scientific inquiry methods across a range of students. All the independent factors of 21S, student-centered learning, professional development, technology, partners, and more, have come together to help close achievement gaps in Jefferson Parish. Dr. Roussel, the superintendent in Jefferson Parish, described the overall impact of 21S as an acceleration that the district could not have achieved with traditional teaching methods. So how can you in the audience begin the work of system change? Here are some of the key points to bear in mind as you move forward on this path. Drive change from the top to help ensure it is embraced throughout the system. Integrate professional development into your overall strategy. Ensure that instruction and technology are seamless and become one. And use technology to support teaching and learning. Remember that smart technology are those that are chosen to improve teaching and learning. However, we at Cisco certainly can, do not believe that we can set an agenda for change without your help and the input of education leaders around the world. That's why we've set up a public service website, getideas.org, as a place for education leaders to collaborate 
on a new vision for change. We urge you to visit Get Ideas and join the dialogue on global education transformation. And please don't forget to register for additional presentation. Thank you and goodbye.